All right, guys, we are back for another Dilcom battle video. So, Bulma, LR Bulma came out, and Bulma is really, really good. Um, really good. Now, typically, the way I like to do these characters, right? Like, I, I like to do these tier lists, is I really don't like to just slam every single char like type of character into one list. I think it gets very difficult it does start to become very subjective at points, like what things you value. That's why I like that when I did the ranking every unit until Raditz, that was meant to just be fun at Raditz's expense, right? Like it's it, it's very tough to do that. But I think it, it is pretty sort of like um, reasonable to rank like these characters that are the same typing, right? So what I would like to do would be to sort all of the type of LRs together, right? So like Yellow Queen LRs, Carnival LRs, stuff like that. Um, and I did do that with Super Boo, right? Because Super Boo is very good, but I think that the way that things are in game for him right now, I, I would not put Super Boo as a top 10 LR in the game. Uh, and it's still like that. We, uh, Super Boo, unfortunately for him, is not on this list. Although he would be very close. Like he's, you know, 11, 12, 13, something like that. Um, now, Bulma's so good that I feel like we could update just the overall top 10 LR list. I started doing top 10... LRs overall because of the introduction of Carnival LRs, right? Uh, these uh, five characters right here um, are the Carnival LRs. You know, in a year and a half, we'll probably have enough to do a Carnival LR top 10. You know, we'll, we'll see how that's going to look. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, I, I did actually spend, I think, probably a little bit more time, like, really kind of, like, thinking about some things, some of these characters. Um, and before we jump in, to me, what I want to do with these lists is... You know, the example I use is when I get uh, 20 French quote tweets calling me fat, stupid, the truth, American dumbass who knows nothing. Am I confident enough in what I'm, you know, putting out there to where they say that and I go, okay, yeah, whatever. Like, okay, you're wrong. I don't care. Uh, and with this list, I definitely think so. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in this one. So let's start at number 10. Uh, we have Carnival Int LR Kid Gohan. Very, very good character. Um, unfortunately, according to the official scientific method that me and Tyler, aka Nanogenics, have created, uh, this is pretty much the most unhyped character ever. Um, even Bulma is ranking higher than this Kid Gohan in terms of our official scientific method hype scale. Um, Kid, Kid Gohan just has no hype uh, attached to him whatsoever. But he is very good. Um, this is a character that is capable of tanking the strongest bosses in the game. In the game, eighth anniversary of Sin Shenron, his AOE normals. Kid Gohan doesn't even need to super attack first, and I think Kid Gohan probably like will be able to very reasonably tank Sin super attack as well. Literally, the strongest boss in the game is type disadvantage for this Gohan, and this Gohan can eat it like like nothing. But I mean, there there are issues with Gohan, right? His I think he's pretty poorly designed. Um, in that he has, like, additionals built in and stuff like that, yet he wants to get hit, right? It's kind of, like, conflicting design. He is very, very good. Um, I think maybe he could even get a little bit higher here. Certainly I could. Um, but I, I, I think I'm comfortable right now just putting Kid Gohan in spot 10. He is very strong. Uh, this is a unit I just feel like no one talks about, no one cares about. But this character is very, very good. Again, I, I, I probably could even have him higher. So, I have Cooler one spot ahead of him. Now, it's a Cooler's team. I, I think some of those, you know, Wicked Bloodline options and stuff like that, they're just not really competing with some of the more recent characters, right? It's like, you know, compare, like, LR Golden Frieza to, like, Dokkan Fest God Goku or something like that. And it's like, God Goku, like, like crushes LR Golden Frieza, right? It's just more units come out. And this, this is where villain teams can run into issues is they will begin to rapidly age as we just get oh my god insane super class buff insane super class buff insane super class buff right and it's like we did get piccolo jr but in my experience using the coolers with piccolo jr uh, and you know i mean more specifically if we're using piccolo jr's team the coolers felt a lot weaker like the i, I felt like a lot of those coolers like lr metal cooler lr fraud cooler you know, metal fraud cooler. He really needs those extra 200% stats. I don't know. I, I like Final Form Cooler. I certainly do wish we could get some other characters who could be good alongside him. You know, Bojack, Lord Slug, Turles, Step On Down. Any of those characters would be massive for Cooler, right, in terms of their link sets. Um, I do still like Cooler, though. I think he's a, an exceptional character. Uh, next, we have Tech Carnival Goku. 
Um, certainly, I would say Tech Carnival Goku has definitely fallen off a little bit, a little bit, right? Um, it, one thing that does hurt him is, you know, one of the best units in the game, uh, you know, much stronger than this guy is a character that wants to use that revive. But, I mean, this guy got probably a, a teensy bit of extra value and that he could be a good revive character to get the 23rd World Tournament Tech Goku to get the full power, right? Remember, you need a character to revive. And right now on Global, this guy probably is the best character to do that for that Goku. But obviously, the 8th anniversary GT Goku and Vegeta are just far better at the job. Um, I like this Goku, though. Stacking, guard, revive, like, it's just a very potent combo. One thing you guys would notice about you know, my top 10 list right here, we have a lot of characters who are really easily able to eat these big boss supers or these big boss attacks. Because that's the thing that separates, I think, the very best units from the not very best units, is their ability to really take these hits. All these characters can do damage, pretty much. Right? Like you, you pull up any character, they're doing big damage, right? Uh, next, we have Vegeta and Trunks right here, and we'll, we'll grab AGL Carnival Goku as well. Um, now, this is very close. I, I, I specifically think that this can go either way. Um, I, I, I love to put characters in the same tier, but, I mean, what these units are... There, there is a lot of similarities to what they're doing, but they're not, like, the exact same kit. So I'm not comfortable putting them in the same tier. I only do that with characters who have literally the same kit, right? But people still spend hours and hours arguing which one is better when they have pretty much the same goddamn kit, right? Um, these two are different. Now, the main reason I would put AJL Carnival Goku ahead of Vegeta and Trunks, I, I mean, I see people crying all the time about this right here. The fact that they have to be in slot one, but that typically doesn't fucking matter because that's the spot where you want your best defensive unit anyway. So I literally have never understood this, right? Like, it's like, Okay, yeah, maybe if this unit was uber weak defensively, but, you know, uh, we're closing in on a year, and they're still ridiculously strong defensively. That has not changed at all, right? They're very, very strong defensively. They could certainly take damage, definitely, but the damage that they're taking, many other, you know, guard and damage reduction characters um, would also be taking in a lot of those situations. They have their stack, they have the strong active skill, but the reason I, I do like Goku, I think, a little bit above them, right now... So, Goku guards for the first six turns, right? In my experience, usually you are wrapping the fight up, like, right around there or finishing it, you know, within a turn or two afterwards. I, I don't really see this as, like, that big of a deal. Whereas, Trunks and Vegeta, they have permanent guard, but there's they, they gotta be in slot one after turn five, right? Um, but this guy, you know, he is stacking stronger than Vegeta and Trunks. Vegeta and Trunks, their stack is only 20%, um, whereas Goku's is um, uh, 30%, right? Because he's just doing the one. But the thing that's crazy for me with this guy is this. This is so strong. This 59% HP regen at the end of the turn, if your HP is 40% or below, I've won so many fights off of that. I've saved so many fights off of that. I, I mean, I would tell you guys, I would just flat out run this guy over 23rd World Tournament Goku. I think if I was to rank all characters in the game, I probably would rank this character above 23rd World Tournament Goku. I think so. I, I would rather run this guy over the 23rd World Tournament Goku. The, the 23rd World Tournament Goku has a higher peak. When, he, when someone revives, I mean, this Goku is not matching at all what that 23rd World Tournament could do. But, you know, if we did 100 runs... I would say chances are very good that this guy would do better across all 100 runs than 23rd World Tournament Goku would across 100 runs, right? Uh, very strong character. Um, his active skill is really not that that impressive, but I just think that this, a, a little bit of a similar kit in some fashion to Vegeta and Trunks, but that heal I think is really big. But at the same time, I think you could easily put Vegeta and Trunks above. I don't think it matters. One other thing, too, to keep in mind, remember that this character was recently buffed, this is now a nullification. This is not an evade anymore. This is now a nullification. So he now has beam nullification, this Goku, which makes him even better. That matters against bosses that cancel dodge, which dodge is so overpowered, they will put more bosses that cancel dodge. It's going to happen. All right, next we have this character. This is a character I think you could move up. Let's, let's also grab the next two. Now, these two right here 
are going in the same spot because they have the same damn kit almost entirely, right? Like, it's... I think if you're splitting these two up, I, I, I just don't... Like, I you're trolling. You're not looking at it deeply enough. These characters are doing basically the same thing. Like, like their strengths are the same strengths. Their weaknesses are the same weaknesses. The blue fusions, right? Like, the, this is a classic example of the exact same kit. I would say Vegito is slightly better because he has... um. Uh, you know, better chances to get additional supers in, which means his defense is going to be higher than Gogeta. But Gogeta probably has the higher peak, right, when he's doing guaranteed crits and then he pops out, you know, four super attacks or something like that. It's it's just going to get a little insane. Uh, these two will melt boss health bars. I think that this is one of the strongest abilities in the game. They gu guaranteed dodge their first turn after transforming. It's just ludicrous, right? Now... I have the 8th Anniversary LR right here at 5. I think you could argue them above the Blue Fusions. I would just choose not to do that, right? Um, the thing with this character that a lot of people just... I mean, this is just... I just see so much discussion back and forth about this character. Nobody, nobody is denying how good they are and how strong they could potentially get defensively after they super attack a million times. But when you show me what they do when you've activated their standby and you've swapped into Vegeta, or you're showing me what they do after they've super attacked 15 times, that's not the weakness of this character. That's not the point. The point of this character is that the first two turns, it's very easy for them to get just get blown away. It's very easy. Very easy. It is very easy. No matter what you say, it is very easy for them to get obliterated the first two turns. Because all they have is defensive defense stacking with their super attacks, right? But this unit puts up damage more rapidly than nearly any other character, right? One of the main reasons is, you know, having this along with the ability to quad super and then they're stacking. They're definitely strong. Um, you know, once they attack four times, very easy condition to do. Uh, you can, you know, swap into the Vegeta standby, where this is one of the strongest defensive units in the game. Um, obviously, this character gets much stronger defensively if you get even a couple of super attacks with them in base, because remember, their stack defense will carry over to Vegeta. I love this. You know, I remember when this character first came out, I saw a lot of people saying, yeah, I love them, but I hate that you transform with them and then they don't attack. But it's the opposite for me. What I love about this character is this. I think this is crazy value. This this form, this ability right here. You can put them, I think, above the blue fusions pretty easily. Um, but I, I will not do that. I, I think it's a little easy for them to get caught. But like you have to understand, once we hit number five, we're in the top tier. I think the top five are all the same tier level. Um, I, but I do think I do think that they're above like you know six and below. All right. So, next here, we're going to get Orange Piccolo. Um, Orange Piccolo at number three. Yeah, it, man, I don't know. It, it doesn't even feel like the top three. Yeah, they, do, they do maybe feel... It, it does feel like maybe you could... Like, this is a level. Six and below is a level. And then maybe one, two, three might be a level. I don't know. Um, Orange Piccolo is ridiculous. He could tank a lot. He could do good damage. Um, he has the key support, which is so good. I don't know why Beast Gohan didn't get this if Piccolo got this, right? Like, that's good. Um, the orange transformation, right, it is the thing about this character. You will constantly see people, like, make arguments for, like, really shitty characters, um, like physical Goku and Piccolo. And it's like, oh my god, look at this run, this easy win. And then it's just actually just the orange Piccolo carry show is all it is. This character is so dominant. And the thing with these giant transformations, right, to again clarify and explain, the way the giant form works, you transform, the boss will use up their special abilities, they'll super attack, or, you know, 8th Anniversary Sin will do his normals, and then, you know, you're in your turns of giant form, then you revert back into base, technically, the, it's still the same turn, and the boss has already super attacked, the boss has already done their AoEs, so it is not a glitch, it is actually a feature of the giant form that it causes the bosses to waste all of their strong abilities so you leave and then they're just doing normal attacks which means this character can protect like all other characters right like this guy can literally be an umbrella 
to prevent slot three super attacks and nonsense, right? I, I just, just a tremendous character overall. Um, I, I think that this orange Piccolo um, is exactly what we wanted from a superhero, um, like sort of like character, right? Uh, just very, very good overall. Um, okay. So, I mean, I guess we might as well grab the next two. So, uh, I do have Bulma at one, actually. I do. Now, I'm sure a lot of people will disagree, right? Which is fine. Um, cause it's like, you know, I, what does happen a lot is people will see like, oh, like, you know, anniversary units and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of times people can be difficult to adapt to like new info or new power creep kind of coming in and stuff like that. Um, this character is ridiculous. I don't really have too much negative to say about them. Um, I mean, they're dominant defensively, right? Whereas at eighth anniversary Sin Shenron, the second phase, that AGL Sin Shenron, is essentially around Dragon Ball Super Broly level of, of strength. Routinely, this character gets blown away in one shot by that by that boss. This character dies to them all the time, that, that Sin Shenron. This character does not. Oftentimes, this character has gotten supered by that Sin before, and they live more often than the other one does. And this character has type disadvantage. It's because they build up damage reduction, which is just 50 million times better than crit, right? So, you know, you get four super attacks in, and they are tanky as hell. Now, one thing about them is they are not a slot one character, which, ding, 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 does actually matter. Because typically, that's where the brunt of the power is. You know, all characters are at least reason, all, at least all top tier characters are at least reasonable defensively after they get their super attacks and stuff like that off, right? Um, including this character, of course. But I think being good defensively before you attack is a real, like, strength that some characters have and others do not. I don't really have anything negative to say about this character, just besides the fact that they're not slot one, right? And then, you know, you either are below 50% HP or after you get hit four times and you swap over to this Vegeta who is like unbelievable with the support. I mean, I don't know what in the Christ they were thinking with this right here. It's absolutely ridiculous. Then when you revive with a hundred percent HP, keep in mind that carnival Goku, you revive with 59%. So it's just like this unit is ridiculous. This unit is what helps make 23rd world tournament Goku exactly what he is, by the way. So, 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 so good. But Bulma is just a perfect design character. I just, I don't know. I I, I want to just speak in hushed tones because the last time I would have ranked a Yellow Quint LR as the best LR in the game, I think would have been LR Goku and Frieza in 2018. I think that's the last time a I would have ranked a Yellow Quint LR as number one. The only other time I could think of where maybe there was an argument Maybe Easy 8 Legendary Super Saiyan Broly in March of 2021, but no way in hell would I ever have put him above UI Goku. No way. Sixth anniversary UI Goku, no chance. So I really think what Bulma's doing, we have to go back to LR Goku and Frieza. Um, I just, I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, she has crits right here, 50% chance to crit. She's getting 50% attack and defense on each super. Um, she's guarding for the first seven turns. Like I said with Goku, I don't really consider this that big of a deal. You're typically finishing these fights a lot of times before the guard even runs out, and Bulma's no exception. And Bulma's also building up damage reduction. Bulma's also rainbow orb changing, right? Bulma's also supporting multiple rotations with this 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 is just it's it's too like this is too good this is the thing that's just so crazy every character in the game looks 50 times better than Bulma Bulma is a villain buff Bulma's a LRB Skohan buff Bulma is a, a, a orange piccolo buff Bulma buffs literally every like it's just insane it, like this is exactly what we want this is a great character a great character archetype to release right here this is so good right Th this is like uh, she's a little different than Chi Lai because Chi Lai is zero attack, but she does everything else. Bulma is hitting really goddamn hard for the fact that she is a support that's guarding with damage reduction. Like, I, dude, I am so comfortable putting her at one. I am. 
I, you know, like, call me stupid all you want to. I'm sorry. Uh, the value you will get from this character tanking all these attacks, supporting, ev making every other character better, guaranteed additional supers. She has one of the strongest active skills in the game where she changes all key spheres to SCR key spheres, which means it's a 100% heal. Then all allies get seven key, 17% attack and defensive active skill buff and become super effective against all types. Hello, dude. Like, it's just, it's silly. It's silliness. I, I am so comfortable with Bulma at one. I really am. I really, really, really am. Now, I, I'm good with this. I do want to talk a little bit. I mean, I guess I maybe should have started the video out. But, like, spots, like, kind of, like, you know, like, 11 and stuff like that. Like, I do feel like we can grab, like, you know, Beast, Super Boo, probably Golden Frieza, AGL, LR, Carnival, Gohan. I, I think that these characters are very competitive for, like, spot 11, maybe, like, spot 10-ish, right? Um, is there any other character I'd want to throw in there with them? Like, Janemba, Fusamasu, no. Yusok, no. This character gets caught way too much. I, I, I'll, I'll put him there, yeah. Um, th th that's basically it, right? Like, the these characters... I, I think that... Th okay, what was this character's weakness since day one? It is his lack of consistency. That was his problem. His key issues and stuff like that. Well, Bulma really helps because not only is she giving him direct key support and stats buffs, but Bulma is also creating orbs, right? We have Path to Power Kid Goku who could create orbs, right? So, like, you can make Beast cook because key was always his main issue. But for me, it's like... I, I mean... You know, Kid Gohan, Carnival Goku, these guys. These guys are all tanking these big boss attacks better than Beast, right? Beast is not guarding for six or seven turns, right? He, he has two turns of guard, right? Which can allow him to really get clapped up. So at a certain point, he does pretty much just become damage. Which, guess what? I'm good on that for the most part, right? Like, you know, maybe you could say Beast is better than Cooler. Really, they are contributing basically the same thing, which is damage. I mean, Cooler has a much better active, right? I feel like Cooler is going to be better most of the time. It also helps that Cooler is, like, the best villain character. I mean, Piccolo Jr. is the best villain character in the game. Cooler is number two. But, like, Cooler, the team is going to be built around Cooler. Whereas, like, Beast Gohan, there's just way better super class units than Beast Gohan, right? Like, so these units up here. Um, we can take a look at a couple of the, the tier lists I did. So, again, I had Super Boo here as the best Yellow Queen LR. Dude, this was, you know, only a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I, yeah, I, I'm very comfortable with none of these characters, you know, being on this top 10, right? The Carnival LR, so Confess LRs are better. Here's my, t the last top 10 we did. This is February 26th. There are some changes. I, I did feel comfortable putting EGL Carnival Goku in front of Vegeta and Trunks. I explained that with the heel. Um, and EGL LR Gohan, I, I, I did drop off a little bit. Um, you know, he, he can get caught pretty easily as well. It's like, you know, things could go very good for him. You know, you could be guarding, you could be stacking, things could go bad for him. Obviously, if you're able to bust out the Super Saiyan 2 transformation, it's crazy. But again, he, he's kind of fighting for like that 10th, like he's, he's in there with like that, that sort of like 10th, 11th spot. Really, I mean, I guess like you could almost kind of like add like these characters like to like here. Uh yeah, I might do this. Like, like, like it, it, it really would be something like this, I, I would say. But, like, probably from Carnival Goku on, you could probably mix and match several of these characters, I think. I, I think it's probably what you could do. Um, But, okay. There we go. I am pretty content with this. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the top 10 LRs. Yes, I think Bulma's number one. I just think that her impact, what she's doing, is just so crazy. Um, but I do think that the top three in particular, the way they impact the fight is just so crazy. Although the blue fusions can be very similar with that guaranteed dodge and just their damage is so crazy, right? And then also um, the 8th anniversary Z Duo 2. I mean, with their um, standby, they could be very, very impactful, right? That's why I do think the, the top tier it is pretty stacked right here. I wouldn't feel comfortable moving this character down. I also probably wouldn't be comfortable moving this character up. I like the Z tier the way it is. So let me know what you guys think of the top 10 LRs in the game. Yes, I think LR Bulma is the best unit in the game. <laughs> Kid Bulma from episode one of Dragon Ball, best character in the game.